Welcome back. In this video, we'll determine the number of solutions to an infinite set of linear systems. Let's get started. Example 3.3.4. For which values of alpha does a linear system x minus 2y plus 3z equal to 1, x plus alpha y plus 2z equal to 2, and minus 2x plus alpha squared y minus 4z equal to 3 alpha minus 4? So why did I say an infinite set of linear systems? Well, I have infinitely many choices of alpha. Alpha could be any real number. Depending on the choice of alpha, we have to determine if the system has a unique solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions at all. Our strategy is as follows. Inspired by the previous example, we're going to use elementary row operations to reduce the augmented matrix to look like row echelon form. Note, going to reduced row echelon form will require too much algebra. In particular, we don't want to scale by things like 1 over alpha, because we could only do that scaling operation if alpha is not equal to 0. We don't want to create lots of extra special cases for ourselves. Once we've reduced the augmented matrix to look like row echelon form, we'll then investigate the special values of alpha where potential leading entries are equal to 0. OK, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do, of course, is to write down the augmented matrix of the linear system. So writing this down. From the first row of the linear system, I have coefficients 1, minus 2, 3, and 1. From the second equation of the linear system, the coefficients are 1, alpha, 2, and 2. And in the third equation, I have minus 2, alpha squared, minus 4, and 3, alpha, minus 4. OK, so to begin, I'm going to start with this leading one here, and I'll use that leading one to clear below, just like usual. So the row operations that I'll need are row two minus row one will be the new row two, and row three plus twice row one will be the new row three. Okay, so when we do this, I have the first row stays the same. So I have one minus two, three, and one. The second row, I have 1 minus 1 giving me 0. Alpha minus minus 2, which is alpha plus 4. Nope, alpha plus 2. Uh, 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. And 2 minus 1, which is 1. Finally, for the third row, I have to scale row 1 by 2 and then add it. So for the first entry, I get 0. Then I get alpha squared minus 4. And finally, I have minus 4 plus 6, which is 2. And 3 alpha minus 4 plus 2, which is 3 alpha minus 2. OK, so it's at this stage where students are often inclined to try to make this alpha plus 2 a leading 1. The problem with this is that if we scale row 2 by 1 over alpha minus 2, that's only valid when alpha is equal, not equal to negative 2. So instead of doing that, I'm going to make the following observation. Notice that I can rewrite alpha squared minus 4 as alpha minus 2 times alpha plus 2. What this means is that I can actually think about alpha squared minus 4 as a scalar multiple of alpha plus 2. And I can use the row operation row 3 minus alpha minus 2 row 2 becomes the new row 3 in order to clear the entry alpha squared minus 4 here. OK, so let's do that. The first row and the second row will stay the same. Second row is 0, alpha plus 2, minus 1, and 1. And finally, for the third row, I have 0. And now let's see, I'm going to multiply row 2 by alpha minus 2 and subtract, so this gives me 0. Here I'll have 2 plus alpha minus 2, because um, the minus 1 cancels with the scalar negative. And finally, I'll have 3 alpha minus 2 minus alpha minus 2. So we'll simplify that in one final step here of the row reduction process. So when I simplify, here I'm not really doing a row operation. I'm just simplifying. 2, 3, 1, 0, alpha plus 2, minus 1, 1. 
zero, zero. Let's see, the twos cancel, leaving me with just alpha. And three alpha minus alpha is two alpha. And minus two plus two gives me zero. Okay, so this is nice because now let's look at what I have. Well, I have a leading entry in the first row. I have something that looks like a leading entry in the second row. And I have something that looks like a leading entry in the third row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the special cases of alpha equal to minus 2 and alpha equal to 0, because those are the values that determine whether alpha plus 2 and alpha are actually leading entries or not. If alpha plus 2 is not equal to 0 and alpha is not equal to 0, then we notice two things. First, the system is definitely consistent. Because we would have a leading entry in each row to the left of the dashed line. And second, notice that we have three variables and three leading entries. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, let's just let's just rewrite this condition as uh, so. Therefore, if alpha is not equal to negative two and alpha is not equal to zero, the system has a unique solution. Okay, so that's what happens in the case when alpha is not equal to minus 2 and alpha is not equal to 0. We're going to have to consider the other two cases separately. So let's start by looking at the situation when alpha is equal to minus 2. So if alpha is equal to minus 2, then what we're actually going to do is we're going to go to that reduced matrix that we found that's up here on the previous page. Here it is. And I'm actually going to plug in alpha equal to minus 2 here. So notice in particular, when I look at this position here, I'll get a 0. In this position here, I'll have a minus 2. And here, I'll have a minus 4. So let's write that down. So if alpha is equal to negative 2, then the augmented matrix of the linear system reduces to, let's see, we have 1, minus 2, 3, and 1, 0, 0, minus 1, and 1, and finally 0, 0, minus 2, and minus 4. Wait a minute. Let's look at these leading entries. In the first row, I have a leading entry of 1. In the second row, the leading entry is minus 1. And in the third row, the leading entry is minus 2. What's wrong with this? Well, notice that I, the leading entry minus 1 is not to the left of the leading entry minus 2. So this is not an REF. OK, so what we need to do is we need to do a row reduction step to put it in REF before we can determine how many solutions the linear system has. I'll do the row operation row 3 minus twice row 2 is the new row 3. This gives me first two rows stay the same. 1 minus 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 0. Now minus 2 minus minus 2 is 0, and minus 4 minus minus 2 is minus 6. Yikes, no solutions, because we have that 0 is equal to 6, minus 6, no solutions. So what does that tell us? It tells us that when alpha is equal to minus 2, the linear system has no solutions. Finally, we need to look at the last case when alpha is equal to 0. So again, I'm going to go back and I'm going to plug the alpha value of 0 into the reduction that we had above. When I do that, I get the matrix 1, minus 2, 3, 1, 
0, 2, minus 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0, 0. So this time, the matrix is in REF. The leading entries 1 and 2 are the only leading entries, and they're in the con correct configuration. I can see that the system is consistent. And I can see that I have z is a free variable. Therefore, the system has infinitely many solutions.